its striking appearance hides its true intent. Large swathes of New Zealand are now enveloped by Scotch broom. Introduced as an ornamental plant by our early settlers, broom has flourished. Now it's a pest plant. Broom destroys the nesting and feeding areas for native birds and riverbeds, and it provides cover for introduced predators. It outcompetes native plants, and on our farmland forms dense thickets, shading out desirable pasture species, and it's unpalatable to stock. The high cost of control can make farming unprofitable and unsustainable, especially on foothills and high country tussock land. The news is no better for foresters. Broom competes with plantation trees by outgrowing saplings, competing for water and reducing growth. But broom isn't only consigned to our rural heartland. You don't have to look far to see it encroaching on the suburbs. And it's not going away in a hurry. A reasonable sized broom plant can produce up to 30,000 seeds per square metre in an entire season. And those seeds fall into the ground and um, some do germinate almost immediately. But quite a large percentage of those seeds go into the, into the soil and stay there. Um, awaiting the opportunity for a ground disturbance or something else to occur for them to germinate and then replace the existing broom stand. Of more concern, broom currently occupies only about 20% of its potential range and without improved control measures it will continue to spread. Our alpine areas beckon. And we think actually that uh, broom has a great deal of potential to become a major weed above the tree line. And it will probably get there along four wheel drive tracks or by spreading along braided rivers, um, which it already invades very, very well. Another habitat that broom invades very well and causes a lot of damage are things called frost flats. Now these, uh, the, the natural forest is kept out of these by repeated severe frosts in, in winter and they're home to a particularly unusual rare native flora and broom can just get in and dominate these and you see it for example up at Tongariro um, just wall to wall broom up to the, the beech forest and it's completely taken out all the natives. The spread of broom in recent decades has been nothing short of spectacular. So gorse and broom arrived in New Zealand around about the same time and around the mid 1800s and by the early 1900s gorse was considered to be a significant weed problem in our environment and we spent a lot of effort um, hammering gorse. During that time broom really wasn't in our radar whatsoever and we kind of left the thing alone. Um, until about 30 or 40 years ago when we started seeing broom actually really increasing in numbers and starting to invade our environment. So in that gap really broom had acted as what we would describe as a sleeper weed. So it had been sitting in our environment relatively under our radar, not in large numbers, just building um, its uh, resources and its numbers, waiting for the opportunity to explode across our environment and really invade New Zealand. And this is where land care research enters the picture. We're world renowned for our expertise in biocontrol the sustainable and environmentally friendly method of controlling weeds using other living organisms such as fungi, insects and mites. Biocontrols aren't a quick fix but will instead work quietly over a large number of years. They attack the plant making it less likely to grow, more susceptible to disease or less competitive. We believe that biocontrol will be an effective tool against broom. Um, so far it's been a bit patchy. Uh, some agents have been quite successful in some areas, other agents in other areas, but we have a suite of five agents deliberately released against broom. We have some very promising signs, and for example, just on site here, we have the broom, broom gall mite doing some, some really impressive damage to broom. So we're in it for the long haul. Broom is not going to be a particularly easy target has this long-lived seed bank in the soil. It's a very widespread plant already, so we have a hard target to control. But all the evidence on the ecology of broom in its native range in Europe suggests very strongly that it is, it's limited by its natural enemies. And by reassociating it with those, we hope to limit it here. Promising for sure, but it's important to note that these programs are long term. It could be 100 to 150 years before a significant impact will be seen on broom plant populations. So uh, 644. But already we are seeing some success, oh, such as on these hillsides in North Canterbury.
So one of the biological control agents we released um, only a few years ago into New Zealand is a broom gall mite. And it's a really tiny um, thing called an area fired mite. It's microscopic in size and it attacks the new shoot growth of uh, broom. What you can see um, is a normal kind of shoot growth and this area fired mite causes the plant to produce these galls where you might get normal shoot growth or normal branch growth. And in this particular plant here you can see parts of the plant have actually died and we can see at this site within three years of the mite being released here we've got uh, whole plants dying as well as parts of plants dying from the attack of this broom gall mite. Of course there is a flip side, broom does have some value. It's an important pollen source for bees in spring, so beekeepers attach value to it. Um, it also can be a food for kereroo in spring. They feed on the young, the young growing foliage and on the, on the young pods. And importantly, conflicts of interest like these are taken very seriously by researchers and the Environmental Protection Authority who ultimately decide whether a biocontrol agent can be released.